Guys, there's something I must confess to you. <laughs> I have a girlfriend. <laughs> I did not want to tell you guys because <laughs> it was a secret that I wanted to keep for uh, only a week, only a day, you know? So, behold, I will bring my girlfriend in and she will be watching me do this very special video. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I got this, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know that probably wasn't funny, but please, I'm tired. Uh, I ordered this cute and adorable little blonde plushie, like, and also, actually, also, not only that, but the shirt as well. Purple Heart Gang, ne Neptune Gang, Rise Up. I ordered all this about, like, a month ago, and, um, be because of this, um, ongoing outbreak, because of, you know, the whole virus and stuff, um, you know, my order was postponed, so I literally got my the shirt and this freaking adorable blonde plushy literally yesterday. And yeah, oh my gosh, she is so adorable. Actually, no, get. I mean, you don't do smooches, but give camera smooch. Give camera smooch. Anyways, guys, hello everyone. It is me, Jer Gaming here, and welcome to. Something I had in mind for quite a while. So on vacation, I had a video idea and I came home like, what was it? Two weeks ago with that video idea still in mind, but I never done it. And I think my reason is, is because I was, because I got a new computer and I was so excited to try out the whole, you know, 60 FPS stuff, maybe even be able to stream on YouTube, which unfortunately I still cannot. Um, but I, <laughs> I didn't even end up doing the thing that I wanted to do. And I even told some of my Discord moderators, hey, would you like to do me a favor and remind me that I have a video idea? Kelp reminded me. And here I am two weeks later actually doing that video idea. So today, I've been wanting to do a little... You know how, you know, we Splatooners make a lot of Splatoon OCs, right? Or at least Splatoon animators, but I don't know if I want to associate my, with myself with them anymore, but that's besides the point. We make a lot of Splatoon OCs. So, I wanted to make a video about having my Splatoon OCs in ranked from, you know, the four different versions of me. Actually, actually it might be three. Uh, yeah, it probably might be four, but the four different versions of me and my other Splatoon OCs that either were in the Splatoon animations or were not shown in the Splatoon animations. And I, and I, one thing I wanted to do, which literally just came in mind, I wanted to kind of give my insight or, you know, tell, talk to you guys about these Splatoon OCs, what happened to them, what gave me the idea, and, um, why... Or are they not in any of my animations? Which I think all of them is gonna be for the same reason, but maybe I could just mention, hey, what would have I used them for in my Splatoon animations? I'm gonna try and go over all of that in one match. Whether if I win or lose, which I'm hoping that the majority I will win, but I wanna do all of my Splatoon OCs, at least almost all, maybe, I, okay, no, as many as I can. I wanna do all of them, give my, and talk to you guys about them. So, you know, four versions of me, right? Um, you know, there's Kale, Sarah, Samantha, and there are four other OCs that I was going to show off later, but I never did. Anyways, with the intro out of the way, uh, I want to get this away. I want to get this out of the way as soon as possible because number one, this is going to be a long video. It might even have to be split up into multiple parts. And number two, just j I just want to play some Mega Dimension Neptunia. I'm sorry. Anyway, so the mode is going to be Clam Blitz. And, um, you know, Clam Blitz is, you know, the butt of the century in Splatoon 2, apparently. And not, you know, other things that actually are butts and stuff. So I'm going to hope that I will do the best that I can. And like I said, I'm going to do all my Splatoon OCs and, um give my and just talk about them to you guys that you probably may not know about them okay blown make sure you watch the sidelines okay <laughs> okay anyways high power level but anyways this oc right here 
uh, Mr. J uh, Jared Gaming himself, the homie Jared Gaming that has been probably, so far probably my longest OC I probably went with. Um, this OC kind of has a little bit of a weird history of how I was able to build it up, but it mostly came from a lot of playing Splatoon 1 and um, the shirt, or not the shirt, but the hat in particular. I think I've already mentioned this in a really old Splatoon video I did, but this hat has always been uh, really important to me, or has been a, like the most notable note about me, like this hat, my Special Forces Barrette. The, like I said, I've been a huge fan of Mario, I've always been a huge fan of Mario, I love Mario with my heart and soul. I, I don't know why, but when I looked at this hat, I was thinking, the first thing I thought of was Mario, but there were also, but the hat, something about this hat also looked infatuating for me, or it, it encapsuled me, so um, I really wanted to wear it. And plus, Open Gambit, at Spl in Splatoon 1 at least, to my understanding, looked like a pretty good ability. But I mean, when you when you actually start playing Splatoon 2 competitively, or you're trying to get better at Splatoon 2, you start realizing that it's not the best, but it does have its uses. But, you know, not in the ones that you would definitely- you, it's not something you would bribe with, though. But it was a build-up to this. I've had multiple OCs built before this. So, like, for example, in some of my um, older videos that I've done, you would notice that I've actually had a Mario hat as my OC. But my problem was, uh, when I actually started doing more Splatoon G modding, I realized that having a Mario hat in possible Splatoon animations was probably going to be inconsistent. And I, and I didn't even know about the whole, like, weld thing at the time, so... I saw it as inconsistent, and I did not want to, uh, put that in my animations, because it would have looked really weird, or I would have, you know... It, it, I just would not have liked it one way or the other, and I definitely for sure know that, you know, it just would have looked weird. I've all, I was also kind of a fan of Lizzie Ratsicle 15, and I say kind of, well, mostly because I had other Splatoon G modders that I was much more of a fan of, like Rex Legend at the time. I think Omega the Squid Man as well, but you know, until he's got revealed that he's literally the biggest bully of the community. And then, um, you know, I think a lot of opinions changed. And, well, Lizzie Rascal had the shirt, you know, the shirt that I'm wearing, and I was thinking, oh, it has my favorite color, red. That's a cool-looking shirt. I'm gonna use that for my OC. Because, you know, we are, we're in the Splatoon community. One way or the other, we're going to copy each other one way or the other, so it should not be a surprise if I'm gonna have something that looks like someone else's, because everyone does. I mean, Federex Blue... He has, he wears my hat, am I, am I telling him he's a copycatter? No, because number one, that's scummy. Number two, um, more, more than likely everyone, or a lot of people actually wear that, and you know, all that type of stuff, and yeah. So, it took some time, but when I started discovering, um, some of the more things in Gmod, then I started actually wearing the shirt. I wore those shoes, the, uh, blue slip-ons, because in real life, um, I used to call them boat shoes, but... Those slip-ons were my favorite type of shoes to wear in real life, and I actually still have slip-ons in real life. But you know, since because I had tennis shoes a little more often, I don't wear them. And admittedly, I like wearing flip-flops more often now because they're, you know, it, it takes a lot less effort to put on, obviously, so flip-flops for the win. I still love the slip-ons, and I still wear them if I, ever, if I have to, like, you know, go somewhere that requires wearing them instead of, you know... You know, places where you should not be wearing flip-flops. So, I mean, that's kind of the general history behind my first OC. I mean, I'm pretty sure I might have missed a few minor details, but you get the gist of it, you know? But that Splatoon OC, my first one at least, did end up being the hugest run with my whole Splatoon animations. Because um, I wanted to eventually kind of, in Two Enemies Part 3, have my OC switch over different clothing. Which is how, um, the one that I'm wearing right here is the one that I was shown in, in Two Enemies Part 1 for just a little bit, though. Um, I ended up reverting back because I ended up switching my OC again. Because, you know, I, wa I started wanting to make an OC that not only was- Not only did I thought look cute, or not- well, I want to say cute. Not only did I thought look okay, but also was usable in Splatoon 2 because I think that's the problem with many OCs I see- in um, Splatoon, in you know the Splatoon animation community, is that they're not usable. Um, for example, like freaking Lizzie, Lizzie Rascal's gear. Um, 
it's not a good roller gear. I'll tell you that. Run speed doesn't do anything for the roller. I mean, I don't know if you guys know that, but run speed literally does nothing for the roller. So I wasn't really into the idea of, you know, just having a Splatoon OC, but it doesn't even work in Splatoon 2. So that's why I got, that's kind of my reason why I did this OC. I mean, it, it probably doesn't work as, as much, but um, ink resistance was something that I kind of prioritized a little bit more often in this game because I think this was before the uh, Spiral Shop Pro had its um, painting buff where it can paint under its feet a little more often now. So I prioritized ink resistance so much, I wanted to do this OC, which this OC actually did work for quite some time. But, you know, as this uh, meta kind of developed, main power up is more needed and you don't really need a pure of ink resistance anymore unless it's like something like maybe the end zap maybe you might have a reason but other than that you, i don't think there is a reason to use this oc or use a pure of ink resistance so that's why i kind of switched over with some of the other ones or you know the one with the main power up one and all that types of stuff i was gonna have this oc a pure a pure <laughs> in um, my splatoon 2 animations uh i think i was gonna have him appear in two enemies part four but at the same time, when I put thought into it, I probably would have actually done my uh, the one with the main power-up gear. Because that's the one that I'm using at this current day and age. So, um, here's this OC. Also, I decided to wear, um, I decided to use the hecking, you know, this shirt because, what was it? That I think there was this running gag about Hawaiian or something like that. I don't know, I don't remember what it was about, but it ended up making me want to use this as like a hawaiian joke or something and i liked that to an extent to where um i wanted this to be my second oc i wanted this to be my quote unquote official oc even though this was more of a side oc but just is um i liked this oc so you know and again i think probably the main reason why i didn't want to go with this oc is because it started to not work in splatoon 2 for me anymore but well Again, like I said, it used to have, which is why I went with the shirt. I went with the shoes and stuff. So yeah, I think we're gonna lose this match if um, no one actually pays attention. I think one of my other reasons of why I also dropped this OC was that it looked too exotic, and I don't know, but something about it looked just a little too strange to me. You know, you're coming. Where I'm, you you're feeling how I'm feeling. It looked a little too strange. So, it may be a little uncomfortable, so I kind of just wanted to change it. So, that's why this Hawaiian shirt OC really never went anywhere. Because I didn't really... I, I just didn't feel its vibe, you know? I didn't feel where it could be headed to. I didn't think it could do anything-ish. So, it was like, mm, I don't know. Like it, didn't, it, like, it didn't feel too major. I didn't feel like there was a reason to have it. So, I, that's why I kind of dropped it for the most part and all that types of stuff. Um, and then, that, and then I think that after this OC, I start having a OC crisis going on. So, um, I'll get into short. I don't want to make the video too long. So let me just show you what my third OC technically looks like. It was, uh, where is it? This was my, um, third OC, my third OC. This was my third OC. I went with this because again, it seemed to have worked in splatoon 2 for a bit until it didn't and until there was a lot more things that need to be prioritized oh yeah actually now i remember my special forces barrette used to have had special power up so that's why i went with this oc as my third technically but that one never went anywhere so and then i also kind of switched it up a bit like uh what is it um i also occasionally had him wear this and like i said because it worked in splatoon 2 for a little bit until the Spider-Shark Pro got some, you know, significant changes. Hey, where's the shoes, actually? This was my fourth OC. Maybe, actually, maybe my fifth, technically. But this was my... F yeah, this, this might have been my fifth. And again, I went with this because it worked in Splatoon 2 for a bit. But it literally went nowhere. So now it's, you know, just a meh. Anyways, this is my fourth Splatoon uh, OC. And again, I went with this mostly because it worked in Splatoon 2. And it still currently works in splatoon 2 because of the whole main power up shenanigan so it's like you know ooh wahoo world I'm, i really do not like wahoo world on clam blitz because it's a little bit awkward for me so it's like i don't know anyways this is my fourth oc mr jared gaming 
aka the one that you that my ugh, oh my gosh i can't speak maybe i am really am tired my current oc um again my biggest reason i went with this was because i just simply this just simply worked in splatoon 2 and i and i wanted to try something a little bit more of my taste i wanted to try something a little bit more non-normal and i thought this was the best one a the best non-normal looking oc um or maybe i wouldn't say non-normal but like mine what was it oh no actually maybe i got the other way around but like what was it i was for a moment realizing that my special forces barrette is like technically for you know it's a it's a shoulder it's it's a soul oh my gosh i i can't speak it's a shoulder soldier it's a soldier hat you know for soldiers so i was thinking that my type of clothing didn't really complement the hat at all I mean, maybe that's what made it, ex you know, exotic, but I started realizing that the OCs that I was going with a lot of the time just did not complement the hat, which is also kind of why I wanted to go with those, like, you know, stray jackets and stuff, because I thought that worked for it the best, but it didn't work in Splatoon 2. I so I mostly put thought into that for the boots, not much for the hecking uh, shirt. I only did this shirt because I just wanted to try something, you know, a little bit normal still, but, you know. You, are, you, you, you might understand where I'm coming from. So I went with these, um, you know, the clothes and shoes. And, um, yeah. I was originally planning for this OC to show up in Two Enemies Part 3. As like a, um, I was gonna, so, so I don't know if I'm gonna finish that. So I might as well tell you guys what it was supposed to be. So, Kale and Sarah versus, um, Darid. Or not Darid, but Garid. You know, that being an existing battle, of course. Um... I wanted to have him show up, like, uh, so my, oh, the, Jared in the hecking, you know, Two Enemies Part 4 was gonna think, oh man, I still wanna go with a new look because Jared is wearing my shirt and shoes and, you know, he looks like me, but he's evil, but people are not good at telling eyes apart sometimes. I mean, you know, if you live in a world where hecking, um, you, like, Inklings and Octolings didn't even know, or Inklings, like, Pearl didn't even know that hecking, um, Octolings were Octolings, then you know there's a problem with their, uh, you know, differences of intelligence. But I wanted this OC to show up in Two Enemies Part 3. But, I mean, I've never got Two Enemies Part 3 around. And I'll, I'll go over that when I go over my, um, you know, one of my character OCs, Sarah. Which, I'll go over that after Kale, which will be the next one. But, um, I wanted him to show up. And then I wanted my Jared OC to realize, hey, I like this clothing. Maybe I can go with this as a brand new solid look. And then that will solve the identity crisis problem with hecking Jared existing. You know, being evil with, you know, the, the clothing that Jared would naturally wear and all that types of stuff. I also went with the Kensa Splattershot Pro because, it, well, I, I mean, again, lame reason, but it this was the... I actually really wanted this weapon to be the weapon that it is in uh splatoon 2 i always wanted us like i said if the splash pro was going to be in splatoon 2 it should have splat bomb and booyah bomb and what do you know i guess some nintendo ninja saw my video and was like actually that sounds like a great idea let's do exactly that so uh, here we are kenza splash pro is one of the most hated weapons in the game because of main power up and um yeah i mean it was only noticeable after the booyah bomb buff because booyah bomb wasn't excellent at the time so you know. Anyways, let me... I think I explained everything that I wanted to explain, so let me just... We're almost done with this match, so let's... Let me just survive real fast. Or not. That's fine. I mean, I kind of don't really have a lot to go over in terms of my OCs, so I feel like what I would want to say for the rest of the OCs that I'm going to, you know, present, I feel like, um... I will have a lot more to say, so don't worry. I'm not gonna keep you all not entertained, so it's okay. Don't worry. See, th this set, this OC works in Splatoon 2. 13 splats, and the other two matches I had only 6. And I was actually banned, because I forgot how to play regular Splatoon Pro for a sec. Also, because that, um, that match with uh, my regular OC that most people like to see and use, um, what was it? Was my first match <laughs> of the whole, uh, of a while, actually. I haven't played this game in a while, so. Who's a little blue? Look at this. Little blue. 
She's blown. 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 You know, I was expecting this to be big, but you know, that's fine. I mean, it, it did say keychain plush, so I should have expected it to be relatively pretty small and stuff. But whatever. Anyways. Next OC in the line is Kale. So now that actually now that I think about it, I do have a lot to say for her. So this is Kale. Um, where I got the name? What? I, okay. <laughs> I mean, it probably was obvious to you guys, but yes, I. It, for those of you guys who think I got the name from you know Dragon Ball Super's Kale, well, the truth is, you're correct. I did. <laughs> massively so I was realizing that it wasn't that hard to come up with names for you know characters like you know people in Dragon Ball Z like up uh, literally characters in Dragon Ball Z were named after vegetables so I thought well it probably won't hurt to you know name an OC after a character that I actually started liking in Dragon Ball Super who was basically female Broly I wanted to base Kale somewhere around that She's sweet, and I. But the only difference is that I wanted her to be everything I wasn't, which was sort of like a leader, uh, you know, a lot more sweet, less stressed, and um, what is it? Um, just again, just everything that I wasn't, more experienced than me in terms of you know, actual combat and you know being in Splatoon 2 matches and all that types of stuff. Um, she had her first OC, which was a, uh, one with, like, the jellyfish eye as the shirt, and the little, I think it was the squid girl boots, but then I went with this gear, the, uh, octo boots for Splatoon 2, and, um, this shirt, mostly because I just randomly selected this, and I thought, hey, this looks like a good OC that, you know, could work with Kale, because Kale, I wanted, I wanted there to be, I wanted my OCs to be, not only, you know, a little more normal-like-ish, but I wanted to be accessible in Splatoon 2. And obviously, I mean, that's another thing I don't like about some of the other Splatoon OCs, is that they make it so out of the blue, so, you know, I mean, you know, kudos for them for, you know, doing the hard work that it takes to make a, you know, interesting-looking OC, but my policy with my Splatoon OCs is if it's not accessible in Splatoon 2, frick off. <laughs> That's kind of the policy that I went through with my OC, so that's why all my OCs looked as normal as they possibly could. So I wanted them to be, you know, usable in Splatoon 2 one way or the other. Whether, I mean, obviously Kale probably wasn't going to be, but that's why I wanted to switch her clothing because, you know, Octolink started becoming playable and um, all that types of stuff. And I definitely was not expecting, you know, oh man, this match is going to end really soon. I'm just going to, okay, never mind. Um... I wanted Kale to be like Kale from Dragon Ball Super, who was, you know, strong, but, you know, you know, she's sweet, but when she's pushed, she is strong, like, very strong, you know? Um, I wanted her to take a major role in my animations and all that types of stuff. <laughs> Maybe I don't really have a lot to say. I was also going to have her main weapons be, you know, the Octoshot replica, because, you know, she's an Octoling, so she should have experience with it. The, um, what is it? The Dapple Dooley's Nouveau and the Rapid Blaster Pro, mostly because of its variety and because it has Ink Storm. That was kind of one of the reasons. Since Splatter Shot Pro does have Ink Storm, I wanted Kale to kind of take an inspiration of, hey, Jared likes Ink Storm. Maybe I should try using weapons that will appeal to him. Wink, wink. Also, fun fact about Kale, I was going to actually do a video of her playing ranked battles. But the more and the more, but when I was getting ready to go to its editing stage, I realized that what I was about to do was not something that I was going to like. This was before I had a voice actor for Kale, um, AK, who was Frost42. Um, and I think it was the first time that I actually got, she was definitely the first character to have a, you know, voice actor, you know, along with Sarah, who was technically the second, because I kind of had like a ish pick of like, who the heck would have been, you know, the uh, the pick for Sarah and then it was Skylar Karate Girl which worked for a bit I'll explain why I didn't afterwards but hecking um whatever so and it was thanks to Rick Kyoto um I was actually inspired by Rick Kyoto from his um the fact that in his videos he has voice actors and he also had you know those two people Skylar Karate Girl and um Frost 42 and I was thinking hey 
I, I had a whole discussion or Rick about it, about, hey, do you know if voice actors will feel all right if, you know, I want them to voice act for my stuff? He simply just told me, they're voice actors. They shouldn't care. Go for it. And I went for it, and thank you, Rikyota, for, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say screwing up my future of animation, but thank you for at least showing me that I am a lot more brave than I thought in terms of speaking to people, because that's one of the things I really do not like, is having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with people, and I think that was one of my biggest struggles with getting a voice actor. Plus, I think someone, I think it was my sister, but she suggested to me that I should not have a voice actor for my animations. But at the same time, some of my other friends, like Tay, said that I, what would be cool is, A, I get voice actors for Kale, or for, like, Kale, for example, and B, um, Darren would have had a different voice actor, which I was contemplating on having a grown man voice acting for Darren, because I wanted, what, what I wanted Darren to sound was more deep, but sinister. But ultimately, I didn't go with that plan because when I thought about it, it actually would not have made any sense. For my case, at least. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, anyways. Out of the way. Four minutes in. Or a minute in, but like, Sarah. Um, super-powered Inkling. Not as strong as the, uh, the pink engraved Octolings, like Kale is. But she is stronger than an average Inkling, at least. One of the things that is unique about her is that she, sur can, she can survive in water. Or at least she can survive a dip in water. I mean, she definitely will eventually dissolve and evaporate, but she can live longer than, you know, five seconds. She can at least live for a minute before ultimately dissolving. Which, I didn't know how I was going to informulate that idea, but, um, you know, whatever. Anyways, Kale, or Sarah, um, the voice actor for her is Skylar Karate Girl. Which, um, there's some, there's a lot of things I want to talk about for that situation, but anyways, um, or my idea was that I wanted there to be a force, like, three different forces. I wanted, you know, obviously the Derek force, uh, the good guy force, you know, me, Kale, and, a, and you know, anyone that joins my party, etc. Which, now that I say that out loud, actually does definitely sound like something you would put in an RPG game. <laughs> or a JRPG. And then, you know, the Octarian force. I wanted, I had this idea because, I think most of it was because of Ant-Man and the Wasp. I actually enjoyed that a little bit more than I probably should have, and I think most of it was because of the idea that there's three different forces in one, in like, at one go. You know, there's Hecking, what was it? I don't remember what was his name, but there's that one guy who wants, you know, uh, Pim's tech for money or something like that, I don't remember, but it was for something, for his own gain. And then there's obviously Ant-Man and the Wasp fan, um... Dr. Pym himself, as the good guys, and then there was the ghost lady and that one dude who doesn't like Mr. Pym as the bad guys, or as the, uh, the other bad guys, or should I say the main antagonist? But, like, again, I liked the fact that there was a side antagonism in there, despite the fact that there was already an antagonist. So I liked that a lot, and I wanted to kind of incorporate that into my animations one way or the other, so... I thought that, I enjoyed that idea a lot, but, um, I didn't really go much with it, because, you know, um, anyways, her origin, I didn't want to get into her origin as soon as possible, I wanted to get into her, her origin, like, I wanted to piece her origin together, um, for Kayla, it was kind of already just there, like, you know, she was an Octarian, she's not, she wasn't, you know, confident in her ability until she got the pink engraved powers, and then she's like, oh, now I can do all this stuff that no other Octoling nor Inkling can do. So, you know, she started getting her confidence through there. And the fact that Derek boosted her confidence, because Derek can be a nice guy, but, you know, now he's not, but, you know. Anyways, um, I wanted Sarah's origin to be with another friend, or she, it, that origin would have been pieced together with another friend, which is actually the next OC that I will be showing off, um, after Sarah. But, um, I wanted her to be basically like, you know, any other normal inkling, and then she got captured by the Octarians for some mysterious reason, and then, um, I don't know, I probably would have write her, I mean, I didn't really fully get the grasp on how her origin would have been, I mean, it probably would have been a little bit more complex than that, but nonetheless, it was gonna be a simple origin, and, you know, I kinda wanted to be pieced together because of a friend that she meets, which again, will be the next OC that I'm gonna be showing after this. Uh, after Sarah and stuff. What I also wanted Sarah to be about was about power. So that's why her main weapons are the 52, the 96 gal, 
and the Glugadulix Deco because I wanted her to be about power, about strength, and about confidence. The confidence of having such strength, such will, that she is definitely not afraid to, with brute force, get through things, you know? So, um, anyways, th something that I really wanted to mention. Why is it that? W why do I keep poking at Skylar Karate Girl here and there? One of the things that I had, one of the biggest reasons why I actually started wanting to discontinue doing Splatoon Gmod animations, at, at least more specifically the main series one, was number one, it gained less attraction. Number two, probably the primest reason, um, Skylar Karate Girl is, at the very moment, a pretty controversial person. Appar so suppose I mean, there's a lot of things I can mention, like supposedly she faked her suicide or something, or like, um, she apparently helped, she, sp she apparently helped plan Brian Jackson's fake suicide thing or whatever. She apparently caused a lot of controversy with, uh, or she was starting to get pretty antagonistic against Jack Tropolis, which even though he is a controversial person at the moment, um, at the time being, he wasn't, at least in my eyes, but the way she seemed to have acted was pretty antagonistic towards some people. That kind of scared me because I didn't want to go with the impression that, hey, I'm going to associate with anyone, even if they are controversial people themselves. So that was probably one of the primest reasons why I stopped continuing this because what also made me really disgusted was that, you know, the whole house uh, exposure thing that happened was most of the big YouTubers, or big Splat-tubers, big Splatoon Gmod YouTubers. I don't want to go too much into detail on that, but, you know, that was a thing. And that made me even more worried because people were still trying to associate with people who technically did some pretty acts, and I no longer wanted to do things associated with the community anymore. At least I wanted to go solo on it. I mean, yeah, obviously that's not gonna work because literally how you get popular is by going with other popular people because, you know, I just, I just didn't want to go with that vibe anymore. I, I mean, I, I was going to, but, um, the more and the more that I started looking at more drama content on YouTube, the more that I just did not want to go with that vibe. And I started realizing that if I get popular, someone's gonna cancel me because, not because I did something wrong, but because I associated myself with someone who should have been cancelled, you know? So, on, so I wanted to get a voice actor from the casting call, which I did. But then I said nothing to her. And my reason was, I started realizing I didn't like working on the project. I actually have an entire minute animated of Two Enemies Part 4. But I, I, I just didn't want to continue for some reason because something about it just started discomforting me Something about just some Something about it was discomforting me and it either it was the fact that I written the story and I started to want to Change some things up, which is why I wanted to do a different series one But even then I still didn't do that or um, you know something else anyways Samantha I was going to introduce her I was going to introduce her after uh, Two Enemies Part 4, I wanted to introduce her in another, uh, in another, um, what is it? In another, uh, Twisted Side series one, or Twisted Side episode, called, um, The Epic Turf War. But, I mean, I mean, if, if the title doesn't convince you guys, then you guys are normies. I thought that title was too normal, and... I wanted to try, and well, it was more of a prototype title, but like, I, my basic premises of that was that it was going to be Sarah, or Samantha, you know, she was introduced in, uh, Darid's Origins Part 2, and I wanted her to, and I wanted to introduce her in, you know, the Epic Turf War, or whatever it would have been called, to show off that, uh, as like a, uh, hey, guys, did you remember this girl? Because... She, she's an existing character, and, um, yeah. I wanted her person- I wanted her to introduce herself by sort of interrogating me and all that types of stuff. But, um, again, I wasn't for sure about that. I mean, I- that probably would have been a good one. It would have probably started out with something like, you know, she gets really aggressive towards me. Um, Kale and Sarah w would, you know, would be along with me. They have no idea what the heck- who this girl is, what is she talking about, why is she all of a sudden so aggressive, and then she mentions Darid. She's all like, you know, wow, <laughs> isn't that kind of suspicious? You look exactly like Darid. And then, you know, I would, and then, uh, I would pick up the red flags, Kale would be all like, oh no, here we go again, you know? And then Sarah would be all like, same, and stuff like that, but, 
Somehow, I don't know how. I was gonna somehow get that resolved. But then, what is it? We randomly, we we somehow get into a conversation where we ask her, Hey, Samantha, uh, what's, uh, what are you doing? And whatever. And she's all like, I'm trying to make a team. I want to call it the Special Forces. Which, is, which uh, some trivia, I had an idea of if I ever created a team, a Splatoon 2 team, I would have named it the Special Forces. But the more that I put thought into that, I wasn't really confident in the idea that I was going to work with people. Because, you know, as a massive introvert, well, I wouldn't say massive. I obviously have in real life friends. Uh, a lot of them, actually. Almost every, literally everyone that talked to me in high school became my friend one way or the other. Whether it was because we just talked in high school, or it was very likely that we did, or they would get a little too physical with me, not in the way where it was harmful, but in a way where it would definitely make you guys pretty uncomfortable. But, you know, I saw that as a, uh, hey, we're friends. Yay, I have friends. And stuff like that, which I'm surprised it actually was not that hard to get, despite how introverted I am. You know, some things can work out better than, you know. But, okay, anyways, getting a little off track. So we create this team, and then we, and then I wanted to create, like, another, like, side perspective of this other team called the Firebreakers, which, on, which, ironically enough, also was a similar name to, I think one of my biggest problems with her was I wasn't for sure who her voice actor was going to be. I had a few ideas, but they didn't really stick, you know? Like, they didn't, it just seemed flimsy. I wanted to do one that was obviously like, you know, a girl, I don't know, I wanted her to seem energetic, but I want, I don't, I didn't want her to be annoying, you know? I wanted her to sound some, I wanted her to sound young, but I didn't want her to sound like an eight-year-old. You, you understand where I'm trying to come from? So, and I didn't know any friend in the community that was basically that. So, I really couldn't find anyone. I wanted her to be, I made her choose this hat because I wanted her to be like a sort of like a, a, a girl Jared, you know? Like, Kale, Kale sort of, Kale doesn't really accomplish that. Mostly because, well, not just because of the gear, but because, well, actually, now that I think about it, I kind of did want her to be like the girl Jared, but at the same time, I kind of wanted Samantha to also accomplish some of the traits that I would be if I was a girl, or I would have if I was a girl, that Kale doesn't have, obviously. Um, you know, I wanted her to be a little bit more sassy, I wanted her to be, you know, basically your high school teenager. I I also went with her with this gear, because I had an idea that it was possible that I was going to do a, um, a school perspective of what was going on, but ultimately... I don't think I was going to incorporate that even if I wanted to, so... She was going to be introduced in, um, hacking the Epic Turf War as the, um, the, um, prototype name for it or whatever. And I wanted her to kind of be a side character. I didn't want her to be, like, too big into the thing as Kale and Sarah kind of are. But I wanted her to definitely be a massive part of the story. And then eventually... When we do create the special forces team, uh, she would join our party and stuff, like a JRPG. <laughs> Alright, let me get this dunked in. I don't think there is a lot much I have to talk about with her. Um, oh yeah, her main weapons are the splash matic and the m -Perry Dooleys. Um, My biggest reason was that I wanted her to be an inkjet user. Like, you know, I, I, so, you know, if you want to think competitively, obviously, you have to have someone think Storm, you have to have someone with, uh, you know, Bubble Blower, maybe, I mean, back in, back in the days, Bubble Blower was sort of a necessity, so, um, what else, um, I wanted there to be someone with, um, you know, a powerhouse weapon, like, you know, the gals, or, you know, maybe for Sarah's case, I wanted her to have a weapon with Baller, so that's why she also likes the Kukudu as Deco. And then for Sarah, I just wanted her, or not, and then Samantha, I just wanted her to use a, um, just, just a weapon with Inkjet. And I like splash o -Matic. I like Amperi Dooley, so that's why I went with the two for, you know, her weapons and stuff. Other than that, I'm not sure there's a lot I can talk about with her. I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover with her. Although it's kind of unfortunate how I'm losing a lot more of these battles than winning, but... Ah, nothing I can really do about it. I'm kind of like I'm, I'm trying to just grow into the habit of doing this for fun. But don't worry, I'm gonna definitely um, make sure that I don't, you know, 
be at the bottom consistently. Okay, so those were all of the, um, the main team ones or the main character ones and stuff. Oh, wait, whoops. I forgot to back out. Actually, wait. Oh, no, wait, never mind. Hold up. Give me a hot diggity sec. Yo, blonde. Why are you so cute? Why are you so cute? Why? Why are you so cute? Huh? Just... I love you, blonde. I just want to tell you that I love you. But I can never share my love with you because you're too d waifu. <laughs> Man, I'm I'm one depressing person. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I've grown up to be this degenerate anime waifu lover who I mean, what is it? First it was Monica and then it was Hatsune Miku at one for like a little bit and then now it's freaking blonde. I think actually no, I think it was no. It's always been blonde actually now that I think about it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hopefully we will win this match, because if not, I will be very upset. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Wow, what a low power level. I guess I must have been doing that bad. I'm sorry, game. I just want to have fun. I mean, it's not easy to have fun in this game, because you know. Anyways, this is Max. Um, one of the... So, most of the characters in the, uh, the Firebreaker team was sort of crafted through just number one what's been happening in splatoon's early meta number two how what the gear that i kind of crafted to what i thought may work and what i wanted the personality to kind of stick with so i think there's a i know definitely some things i could say about max i mean i only have like a few interesting things but you know enough to where it's like interesting i think fun fact i kind of already knew who i wanted to voice act, um, freaking Max, and that was gonna be my good friend Electric Squid. I wanted him to voice act, um, this character, because I kind of, I kind of wanted to sue his personality a little bit around, just being, you know, pro you know, being the guy with the glasses, but being chill, playing with weapons that seem to have ran the meta, you know? That's what I kind of wanted to do with this character. I, I wanted her, I, I wanted him to be voice acted by my good friend Electric Squid, and there's a couple of the characters I wanted them to be voice acted by some of my other friends or quote unquote friends. Um, Max was actually introduced, not really introduced, but he was first seen in Two Enemies Part 3. There's this one scene, I can't remember what specific scene it was, but he was seen in one of the corner. I think it might have been the scene where the face, where the shot was facing towards Kale, I think. There was this one shot that was facing towards Kale. And, um, you would see him in the background, like, just far up in the background on Murray Towers. And he was talking with another- with a, uh, Inkling girl, who's also part of the Firebreaker team, who, who, you know, in that scene, uh, apparently joins the Firebreaker team. But her name is Laura, and I'll, you know, get to that later. For Max, I think I came up with the name, mostly, from Maximilian, or I- what was it? I was a hu I'm a huge fan of Max- well, I wouldn't say I'm a huge fan of Maximilian, but- I love Max Millen. I love his content. I love what he does. So, for some reason, he came to mind, and I was thinking, yo, how about I make an inkling named after him? You know? Like, okay, it's not that massive, but it, I was running out of, you know, names to call my OC, so it's like, I had to come up with something, so I went with Max, and yeah. Oh gosh. So I wanted him to be the chill guy because I wanted everyone else to be kind of like the um oh hey I'm assertive over I, I'm I have more dominance over you uh, don't take that the wrong way but oh I, I have more you know I'm way better at you know doing turf war and ranked matches than you shut the heck up oh hey um I'm more better at this than you whatever and I wanted Max to be like the only chill character of the whole of the whole gang and um. Because, you know, being voice acted by someone, Electric Squid, Electric Squid, who is number one, one of my friends, and number two, I'm not going to lie, Electric Squid, but you seem like you're just dead on the inside. So, I, I saw you as the guy who just always seems to be chill, regardless of the situation, so, you're welcome, question mark. Anyways, uh, I think that's all I have to talk about for 
Max in particular, so. Gotta love your auto bombs. Honestly, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about Max. I mean, I don't really have anything interesting to him. I wanted him to be a... You know, I wanted him to definitely be introduced in, um that the uh, epic turf war and all that types of stuff so yeah that's all i have to say about him are we going to lose oh that sucks that sucks one thing's for sure though i definitely had more confidence in talking to electric squid i think n also because or actually no now that i think about it another fun fact i actually well Electric Squid was kind of like the, uh, yeah, he's definitely going to voice act this character, but another person that I had in mind was, what was it, what was it, like, Flamez Z or something like that, but, or also known as Black Jared, or who used to have been named Jared Plays, or we like to call him Black Jared because his name is Jared, and he told us to just call him that just because, you know, it's funny, um, but I was contemplating on having him voice act this character, because he confidently DM'd me, hey, if you want someone to voice act your character, I can do that. So I had him on the list of, hmm, voice act this character or that character, you know? Well, I only had him for, you know, maybe voice acting Max, but, um, yeah, I, it was kind of strongly for Electra Squid to voice act this character, but just in case, I also thought, hey, maybe homie Black Jared can, you know, voice act Max, just in case, you know? But then I feel like I've had to change his personality around to where I didn't like it, but, you know, we may never know because I never experimented it in the first place. All right, this next OC, I am not going to like this next match because this OC uses chargers. And you know how I do with chargers. And with this gear set, sort of doesn't work. At least now that I've gotten more... Oh, I forgot to back out, you know. Oh, yeah, look. The one private match that I did with my friends and, you know, got... Oh, splats. Isn't that wonderful? <gasps> oh, I scrubbed out the shirt. Oh, that's right. Oh, this is gonna be terrible. Awful. Sucky. It's gonna suck. Gosh darn it. Alright, well, I guess I'm gonna have to make the best of my ability. I love you, blonde, so very much. <laughs> Why? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. One day, somehow, will be smart enough to make waifus come to physical life. I mean, we already have waifus on the phone, but I want to speak to them. I want them to be as smart as a human. I want them to think like a human, and I want them to look exactly how I want them to look like. Just like you, Blon. Okay, anyways, uh, Laura. Um, another one part of the, um, who, what is it? The Firebreaker team. I actually... Okay, so... Her main we I actually forgot to mention Max's main weapons, but it was, uh... The blasters. Like, literally any blaster. But his favorite is the custom blaster. Because, you know, running meta weapon at one point. And stuff like that. Um, what is it? Laura, I want her to be a charger... I want her to be a long ranger meme. Uh, not meme. Main. So, weapons like E-Leader. Uh, you know... The Splatter Scope. The jet sculpture, which I want, I didn't want to use, which now that I think about it, I should get charger practice, so I, I'm not going to use the jet sculpture, which is like, charger. <coughs> okay, let's not get distracted. Um, oh shoot, wait. Oh shoot, someone, someone's in our base, and now I have to put up with it. Isn't that amazing? Actually, who's, we find someone. Oh, who was that? Oh, wow. That that did nothing, but okay. Those, the many nerfs it received. So, not nah, unfortunate. Anyways, I named her Laura because I actually have a youth pastor. Or, I don't know if she's a youth... Well, actually, yeah. A Bible study teacher, youth pastor, named Laura. Who, honestly, might as well be my friend at one point. I, I guess she is, even though she's my teacher. Bible study teacher, but, you know, whatever. Um... I named it after her, mostly because I ran out of names, and I was thinking about her. Um, and I was thinking, you know what? I'll just name her Laura. Her personality trait is that I wanted her to also be calm like Max, but I didn't want her, but I also kind of want her to not just hint towards the idea that maybe she likes Max a little too much, but that she's also very, you know, 
rudely confident, you know? I want her to be a little bit more rude with her confidence, you know? That like, oh, I mean, I'm calm. I can be calm, but I'm a, f you know, you gotta flex on your charger skills, you know? But I mean, I can't. I'm, d I'm definitely not like, you know, Laura, who can flex charger skills and I can't. I like that, that, I'm just saying that splashdown shot was just lucky, okay? Oh, dang. That was, that was expected to happen one way or the other. Cover, recover. Um, honestly, now that I think about it, I am not really good at writing my character. Or I'm not good at making them sound interesting. So, for Laura, it's kind of the same situation I have with Samantha. I knew who I, I knew how she should sound, but I don't, I didn't know anyone with that. I didn't know anyone in the Splatoon animation community, or at least who's actually a good voice actor with that type of voice. So I wasn't for sure about um, Laura in particular. I, yeah, definitely wasn't for sure. I think, actually, I think I made a list with the possibility of, hey, maybe these are the characters. You know, I have a list of characters that I think I know who I wanted to be voice like. I think a possibility for Samantha would have been Rudy, um, who's part of the um, Splatoon animation community. But like, now that I think about it, it, it would have, I feel like I would have just done it just to, just to check the, just to check those marks, you know? But, I, so, but with Laura, I straight up didn't know who. I didn't have anyone that I knew could voice act Laura, so, for her, I was just stuck. Well, I was definitely getting someone. So, I feel like she was going to be a struggling matter, and I feel like that was definitely going to be one of the things that I feel like, in a lot, in hindsight, would have been, it would have probably been better if I didn't get any voice actors. Because then, for the characters I didn't know who or who would be, you know, their actor, at least, um, what is it? At the very least, um, what is it? I won't have to worry about voice actors and I could just, you know, let them, you know, do inkling stuff like me, me, screamy, you know, all the types of stuff that, you know, why are you giving me a super clam? I mean, I get that I had a lot, but like, you know, I'm surprised that I was using a charger and we won that. Like, I was very confident we were going to lose that, but I guess my charger skills somehow picked up somehow? Hello? I mean, six kills, but we won. I didn't do too bad. I sh my first splat was literally shooting down a splashdown user. I don't know about you guys, but that's impressive. Again, Laura was going to be, you know, first... Laura's first appearance was in Two Enemies Part 3 along with Max. Who, again, I wanted her to be like a, uh, she had a, a little bit of a strong interest with, uh, Max, but I didn't want to, like, poke it too hard to the point where it was like, hey, sh you know, we demand ship, because, you know, we want it. Oh, thermal ink? Are you kidding me? Man, I thought I had a good idea for inkling OCs, but not with this one. It's pretty possible that I probably made this OC use thermal ink as her shirt main to like see if thermal ink was usable in some way shape or form which i'm pretty sure the obvious answer is no is and you know yeah anyways mabel this next oc and yes well i think i named it after the gravity falls mabel what was it um i think i made these ocs somewhere around like after october and we went to disney like the you know disney hawaii and um what is it we were watching gravity falls and after i wanted to make those ocs Maybe came to mind. I don't- well, maybe- it's- it's possible that it wasn't because of Gravity Falls, but... Actually, when did I make these OCs? Might have actually been beforehand. Actually, yeah. It might have actually been beforehand, so it's possible that I named this person Mabel, not from Gravity Falls, but just, you know, Gutch fam. Alright. Alright, dang it. I was- Really waiting for them to pop it, but <laughs> they're smart. Anyways, uh, Mabel uses nozzle noses. Any of them. All of them. L3, H3, you know? I wanted her to be the nozzle nose gang, or part of the nozzle nose gang. And um, for her personality, I wanted her to be the assertive one. Like, hey, shut up. I'm like the, I'm like pretty much the leader of the gang because, you know, I'm probably the best of the gang. Like, we, it's probably been proven 
But, you know, I want her to be like the, um, you know, I'm the best. Even though I'm probably not, but I'm the best. Y you get where I'm coming from with her? She's kind of like that. I don't know what you were thinking, but okay. I mean, it was probably very dumb for me to just head first in there, but like... You know. Oh, almost got him. Okay. I was gonna have her be voice acted by TZ. Because I kind of wanted her to resemble TZ a little bit. Mostly because of the, um, the hairstyle. Or maybe I thought... Or no. Maybe I might have thought that she should be voice acted by TZ. Because not just the hairstyle, but just the way that I've kind of written her. Or I've wanted to write her to seem a little bit resemblant to TZ. But, you know, obviously I never got to the point where we got to do that because, you know, I never even got to finish two enemies part four. So, you know, anything. So, these characters kind of never went through, unfortunately. However, if I were to continue doing, um, you know, the hecking, um, you know, this, you know, the Splatoon animations, and I actually got to, you know, the Epic Turf 4 and stuff like that, I feel confident to say I probably would have chosen a different voice actor. And, well, okay, knowing T- I, I don't wanna- I don't like saying this, but knowing TZ, she probably doesn't watch my videos, so I'm just gonna say this. TZ is sort of a bit of a controversial person for me now. At least when I- I mean, I think that was one of my reasons why I didn't hang out with her as often as I should, which, if you guys don't know who TZ is, she's apparently, uh, uh Alpha Swan's girlfriend slash wife in Animal Crossing, which is official now, which is really weird saying that, because- that's not a thing. I mean, well, I mean, I wouldn't say that's not a thing. People actually did do that, but with them, I feel like they'll take it to a literal and just do their actual marriage later, but, you know, because they haven't met IRL yet. Okay, anyways, stop with the controversial topics. Anyway, um, TZ was getting a little controversial for me, and I started feeling like she maybe should have had a different voice actor, but I, but for me, TZ just sort of worked for this character. Maybe not at its fullest extent, but maybe to the closest compared to anyone that I knew. So, yeah. That's why I was probably going to go with TZ as the voice actor for uh, Mabel. Which I'm still not sure if I got that name from a coincidence or if I was thinking of Gravity Falls Mabel at one point And I was just like, you know what? I just need to pick off a name. Give me that name. Because, you know, man, we're facing some lag over here. Oh, we're definitely facing some lag. We, we have a disconnect. And it was at the time where we need them at the most. Oh, they popped. They did pop it, but I was too far. I definitely was not going to be able to, you know. Maybe this video wasn't going to be as interesting as I thought. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say that, but you get what I come. You get where I'm coming from. Oh, great. Well, that's a GG. Well, I think I did okay. However, this is the tenth match, so. I think my points are gonna be relatively pretty bad. Very, actually no, very bad. Awful, god awful. Like, I don't even wanna see it awful. You know? What is it gonna be? I mean, it's bad, but it's not that bad. It's bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's bad. I wanted, uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I wanted Mabel to kind of be the actual leader of the gang, along with this next OC, um, that I'll be showing off right now. Slap, 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 clap, 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 slap, 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 clap, 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 dun, 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 Okay, last OC. At least I'm pretty sure this will be is will will uh, <laughs> i okay i named i definitely for for sure named after him from will ryan da games um you know what <laughs> i don't know i don't know what to tell you other than i did so um again the last member of the firebreaker team in a way i also wanted will to be sort of as the uh, hey I'm the leader, not you, Mabel, type of person. Um, I wanted him to be the one that is likable, but at the same time gets into an argument one way or the other. Um, so I kept that in mind, and that's why I wanted uh, Sega the Hedgehog to... I was going to have Sega the Hedgehog to voice act um, this character. 
because I wanted him to be sort of the, um, sort of the aggressive type, you know? Like, he can be nice, but he can be aggressive too, you know? I wanted Will to be that type of character. His main weapons are the dynamo rollers, because he also likes power, but, you know, can't have power with the gals if, you know, I don't know. Anyways, yeah, those are his favorite weapons, and, um, I don't know. Like, now that I think about it, <laughs> now that I think about it, I think that's the only thing I have to say interesting about these characters is that, um, I was gonna introduce them in, you know, the Epic Turf War, which was gonna be after two enemies part, which was gonna be after two enemies, and, um, uh, I just wanted it to be, like, a normal, a normal Splatoon-like animation thing, and what was it, um, I don't know. I feel like one way or the other, um, I feel like they were going to, I feel like, what was it? When they meet Samantha for the first time, or when they meet us, they meet the gang, you know, you're gonna have them. They're gonna be confident, they're gonna be, uh, trash talking, but then you're gonna have, you know, Max, who's all like, ah, whatever, hi, hi guys, uh, nice to meet you, good games, you know, good luck, you know, and then, you know, yeah, we was all like, oh yeah, we're gonna win this game, guys. I can feel it, because I'm definitely 100% the leader. But then that's also Mabel, but she's more assertive, you know? So that's what I kind of wanted to run with for these characters, if you get my vibe. So, honestly, <laughs> I thought I was going to have a lot of things to talk about for these characters, but I did for only a few of them. Because, you know, there was something controversial going on with them. So it was like, you know, okay. Why were there bubbles behind me? Uh, without further ado, I'm just going to hope we win this game. Because I don't think we are. Oh, wait. Never mind. We might. Hold up. Oh, wait. Yeah, we might. Hold up. We might have to play defensive here. I think I was going to have the epic turf war. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. It was going to be an epic turf war. I was going to... I What I wanted to do was I wanted to be, you know, in a, you know the four Jareds. Jared, 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 and Jared. I wanted it to be... I wanted to have a better turf war. You know? Like, I, I mean, obviously, it's really difficult because doing animations... And having like a full-on aggressive turf war match is obviously not that easy to accomplish because I don't think anyone has, at least to my eyes. And like I said, after the whole uh, controversy that went down about Skylar, I wasn't for sure about if I wanted to continue doing the series. Because, you know, I can't just continue doing it. I can't just have voice actors in it and then just drop them, you know? Like, obviously, like, that's that's not right, you know? Also, fun fact, um, I actually don't remember if this is correct, but I think I was gonna have his eye color be revealed some way or the other. I wanted his eye color to be secret for some reason, because, you know, he's wearing glasses, obviously they should be mysterious, but I think his eye color is blue, if I'm not mistaken. I say this because his um, OC color is, you know, sort of like a a tealish, like a light blue, you know? But I don't know. Honestly, actually, yeah, I don't really have too many interesting things to say about my OCs. <gasps> oh, wait, hold up. I got two of them. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Hurry, 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 hurry. Yikes. Can we do this? Woo! Good games. Good games. What a way to end off the video. Woo! And those are all my OCs, my Splatoon OCs that I was going to show off my Splatoon animations. I mean, okay, discluding, you know, Garrett, Darren, and that types of stuff. And, um, you know, I sort of also discluded my, you know, OC with the black jacket who appeared in Joe Kennedy and Spartans, you know, video, but, you know, whatever, we don't talk about him because, you know, stuff would happen. But um, I hope you guys enjoy watching this video. I really wanted to try something new with this. I wanted to kind of, I really always kind of wanted to do a video where I wanted to explain something that never came across my channel. And in a way where I was playing Splatoon 2 or Smash, just for fun, just to explain something, you know. And um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give it a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. I am definitely going to switch my Ink Sona back to hecking, you know, my regular self and stuff like that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. See you guys, whatever we do next. Take care. God bless you guys. And have a fantastic day, night, whatever. I don't know. Just see you guys later. And just enjoy the fact that I recorded this video at 60 FPS.